I mean, I don't fancy it in my backyard. Maybe you do. Do you fancy a pylon in your own backyard? Apparently, hundreds of miles of overhead cables and pylons could be forced onto the British public to meet the net zero goal. Yeah, of course. As energy demands grow, ministers are increasingly concerned it could outpace the capacity of the national grid as many households switch to electric cars and heat pumps. National Grid Chief Executive John Pettigrew told The Telegraph that I'd be incredibly, it'd be incredibly challenging to expand the grid to meet the government's targets, including eliminating fossil fuel generation by 2035. But would you want a pylon in your backyard? Let's see what uh, my panel make of that. Joining me now, Matthew Stadlin and also Martin Dorby. Martin. Um, net zero, along with open borders, are two of the slow suicides that the Liberal West is committing upon itself. This, this religion of saving the planet, of climate emergency, of net zero, basically is impoverishing people, it's impoverishing the poorest, the hardest, it's forcing petrol cars off the road by 2030, gas boilers will be next, we're getting poorer, we're getting colder, we're getting hungrier, and we're told we should be happy. We're not happy about it. We don't need more pylons, we need more <laughs> power stations, we need more shale, we need more coal, we need energy sovereignty. Now, the fact of the matter is, putting more wind farms, uh, which don't work when there's no wind, as solar panels we found out last week, get overheated when it's too hot, you couldn't make it up. It's like, it's like toy town politics. Politics. There's a complete lack of joined-up thinking. But we don't need more pylons. We need to be energy sovereign. Every time you talk about pylons, I'm thinking of a Twitter pylon. Me I've too, been, yes. I've been <laughs> on the wrong end of a lot of Twitter <laughs> pylons. No one, likes a, no one likes a pylon of any sort. <laughs> Let me just address a couple of things of what you say, because I do think it is important. First of all, you, you, again, you link the two topics. You compared environmental science. You mis mistook science for, for religion there, Martin. But you compared what's going on with, with climate activism, and not just climate activism. One thing I will give this the Conservative government some credit on, although not Rishi Sunak, who doesn't seem to be very interested mm. in the environment at all. Hence the resignation, by the way, of Zach Goldsmith. Do you see his letter? It was absolutely mm. toxic. It was an essay. Boris Johnson did something towards trying to, to save the planet. The Conservatives are taking this seriously. It's not just just stop oil people. It is actually mainstream. The, the, your views, I'm afraid, on this are fringe. On the open borders thing, just I have to make this point. You say open borders, you know, and you use the word suicide. Yeah. No one wants, well, very, very few people, maybe the radical left, and I'm not a member, contrary to what some people might paint me as, a member of the radical left. No one wants open borders. The I don't EU, want open no, no, borders. The EU do. I, I don't, the EU do. I, the EU, in the EU countries, they have yeah, open borders. That, you can go from within one the to EU. The yes, that's true. Yeah, within the EU. Open borders. Those are open no, borders. but what I mean is, when it comes to people coming across in irregular routes over the sea, incredibly dangerous, risking their life at, at, and limb. No one seriously well, wants, no one seriously wants that. So let's not, let's not paint people like me as a sort of loony left, because no. I'm not. On the climate science, we cannot wish it away. NIMBYism is a very strong force. Of course it is. I wouldn't want to have a pylon in my backyard. Right. We have to get it right. Policy has to be sensible and thought out and not knee-jerk. Yeah. But if you say that we should renege on our commitment to reach net zero, I think I'm should. afraid that is fringe. Well, okay, it's, it's okay, fringe. But, you, but you're saying that. OK, so if we don't do the pylons, which is... This is the, the, the boss with the national grid saying that we need to do that in order to kind of, you know, keep up with the so-called 2030 and 2035 deadline. What is the alternative, in your view? Well, if the only way to reach our commitments is to stick more pylons on, then regrettably, I suppose I'd have to swing behind it. But, I, but life is not simple. It's not easy. The problem is we can't wish away the science. Wind farms, by the way, I love our natural world. The natural world is not just about carbon. It's not just about stopping temperatures going up. It's also about protecting beauty, right? That's I, absolutely I interviewed right. someone about yes. rewilding on my 20 questions with podcast the yeah, other day. Okay. When, yeah, I go to Scot when I go to Scotland, I drive out to Scotland, or go, or, or on the train. It is be a beautiful landscape we have, and I'm afraid, yes, wind turbines do scar that landscape. Martin. The fact of the matter is, anybody with half a brain could have told us ten years ago that mm. if every car in Britain is electric, we're going to need more ele electricity. I mean, the fact we even have to say it is numbskulled. We don't need to go down this route. Now, when you look at the carbon footprint of, of producing electric batteries, electric cars, it's far greater than, than, than a traditional mm. car. We can stick with what we have. Cars are cleaner burning now. They're more efficient than they've ever been. Encourage where, where, where are you that basing technology? that on? Because that, 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 you're essentially quoting facts at us. Where are you getting these facts, the idea that electric cars are more damaging to the environment well, well, than regular cars? There is energy information that does tell you but, that the wait, carbon... 
what's question. the source? Let me just finish. There is information out there that you could look and Google and find. But says, what's the source, but, uh, Nana? Let me just finish. Let me finish what I'm speaking. Uh, is that there are plenty of sources that will tell you that. And in the break, I'll find you an exact source okay. for you. Uh, but there are plenty of sources that will tell you that the carbon footprint of creating electric, an electric vehicle is far bigger than actually keeping your own car. And in fact, I'll give you one source, and that was Rowan Atkinson himself, who was an electrical engineer, who had said that himself. Mm. So that is a source. Rowan Atkinson. In the, Rowan Atkinson. As in Mr Bean. As in Mr Bean. <laughs> That's right. an unusual source. Well, you asked for a source. No, yes. it's not an unusual source, because <laughs> he's an electrical engineer. Well, let's and do he, some typing he himself, in the break. He, no, I'm not going to do some typing in the break. Don't patronise me. Because well, you I, said I you actually, were. Let me finish. I don't need to, because I've just remembered a source. <laughs> let's, I don't, not, let's have another row. I'm not up for a personal row. Thank you very much. Well, OK, so let's, let me talk about this. The source, for me, is Rowan Atkinson. He's an electrical engineer. He wrote about it, actually, in the, in the paper, saying that he has gone off the electric car dream because he realises that, actually, it is not better for the environment and that you're better off keeping your uh, petrol engine until it actually dies out rather than buying a new electric car. But right, there we go. Right.